a very happy 4th of July coming up. Um, let's, before we get into our agenda, as always, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll in the silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's uh, jump right into uh, Priority Carol, Commissioner Boucher. Oh, oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. We've got a holiday weekend in front of us. Everyone's excited. Some time off of work. I'm going to read off some of the new hirees for the county. Andrew Swessinger, Maintenance Specialist, Farm Museum. Michael Carr, Lead Plumber Facilities. Lindsey Davis, Office Associate, Citizen Services. Ron Nowicki, Management and Budget Analysis. Chad Waleski, Program Engineer, Land and Resource Management. Ryan DeGroff, Cashier Trainee Collections Office. Simon Cadell, Cashier <coughs> Trainee Collections Office. Tina Marlowe, Fiscal Technician, Public Safety. Thomas Milnes, Cashier Trainee Collections Office. Summer Moffitt, Budget Intern Management and Budget. Bradley Nalene, Technology Services Intern. Connie Yarborough, Assistant State's Attorney. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. I think we have some site visits. Mr. Swam, you got something you can bring up for us? Out at the flood zone this past weekend, <clears throat> they did a remembrance ceremony for the 50th year anniversary of Agnes flooding. And also, thanks to our staff there, they set up a booth and gave public awareness on flooding. It was an absolutely wonderful event. And flooding is one of those issues that people don't pay attention to and when they happen they're absolutely devastating so please keep awareness and I want to thank all the staff members for putting it together uh, I did some uh, this is the culvert piping that deteriorates on us and thankfully our engineers and staff go around and inspect these they fail we're going to be lining those here's Kathy Virts our roads administrator checking this st storm drain you see all the debris piled up and some of the asphalt's missing that is a telltale sign that that storm drain is failing and when those roads fill up with water, it can lead to death and injury. So thanks to our staff going around inspecting all these facilities there. You see one of the pipes is half clogged with debris. And one of the posts of the guardrail, it's mounting is eroded out. So it's vitally important that our staff goes around and inspects these. There's Kathy looking down the side. It was absolutely gorgeous day. I'm very grateful to staff to take me out and show me these sites that are in our district so I can keep our, our citizens and constituents updated. I did a site visit down in Union Bridge for stormwater management down off Locust Street. What a wonderful project it is. And I've learned a lot about stormwater management. They're staging up the system where it filters out the water before it goes down into Little Pipe Creek. And this is both the contractors from Kibler Construction with our staff and Mayor Jones is in there. And I want to thank all those people out there who make this possible. We run into some difficulties on projects, but fortunately the interaction between air staff and a contractor helps eliminate these problems. They're not as bad as you think. There's some sinkholes out there since it is a floodplain, and they're properly addressing those. I don't know if I have anything else or whether that's it. I get so busy with everything. I think that might be it. So thank you very much. And have a very happy 4th of July with all the people you love and celebrate our nation's birthday this weekend. Commissioner Weaver. Well, I just want to say, you know, the 4th of July coming up and uh, safety is going to be extremely important. The county does have their fireworks uh, display, is that Sunday or Monday? Monday. Monday. Okay, coming up here at the Farm Museum. Uh, it's a great event. Uh, it's all uh, supported by uh, donations. So, uh, uh, as always, uh, Jack and crew do a great job putting that together. But... Uh, think safety this uh, holiday because uh, always people buying fireworks on their own and it's not that wet out there it's still fairly dry and people will start a lot of fires uh with firecrackers uh can't roman candles going up or whatever and just be aware uh those straw fields burn fast so thank you and remember your animals yeah mm -hmm. so yes good call okay uh commissioner uh Wentz more importantly on that is the uh, firework safety when it comes to uh, hand injuries and what have you and deaths there were 18 deaths last year 
due to fireworks. So really, uh, besides setting the field on fire, just in Maryland or across yeah, the nation? Across oh, nation. Okay. okay. So um, anyway, just yeah, be mindful of that. A um, couple things had a uh, planning and zoning meeting last night. A good work session. Uh, still working on the ag zoning and uh, going through that. And um, conversation was was robust and uh, not quite to us yet, but they're they're moving as rapidly as they can so that they can get to us. So uh, it's it's been interesting. Uh, so I applaud everyone on there, Dick. I think you made mention last week when I wasn't here uh, that you know that group is really working well together, and there's some yeah. really great uh, there's some really great thoughts and ideas coming out of that group, and you can see it now really at play because you've got folks from various areas from around the county which is important so uh, kudos to that group and we'll be hearing from them uh, as we continue with that uh, Carroll County was well represented last week at the Maryland State Fire Association uh, convention in Carroll kudos to the Westminster Municipal Band who uh, always represents Carroll County and the city of Westminster very well uh, here's my here's my uh, linking to you to say you know we're always grateful for the funding that we receive from the city and uh, <laughs> um, they we had a good we had a good group on the street and we've sort of been labeled as the official band of the Maryland State Fire Association now so um, they'll be performing at least five times over the next four days and that's a volunteer outfit uh, so remind reminder of that um, too that you know we've got a lot going good things going on in Carroll when it comes to that uh, if you've been up 97 lately, uh, there's steel in the air at um, Charles Carroll Community Center. Uh, I'm, I get giddier. Is giddier a word? <laughs> giddier with excitement as things continue to progress up there. Uh, that was a that was a hard hard fought battle to even get that thing up there, and um, I, I always thank my my colleagues who who voted for that. Uh, because that area of the county uh, deservedly will get a tremendous building up there that uh, will bring that community together. So thank you to everyone. But if you get a chance to ride up there, what a great sight when you come around the corner and see steel in the air. <laughs> so and there's a young lady sitting in the audience that knows exactly what I'm talking about. So other than that, be safe this holiday uh, weekend. And... Um, Make sure that you celebrate in the safest manner. And, yeah, come out to the Farm Museum. That's always a great event on uh, Monday. <coughs> oh, one, one last thing. Dennis and I were at the MACO legislative meeting yesterday, yep. virtual, uh, starting that process already. So we got an update. The convention's coming up in August. The MACO, well, the conference uh, is coming up in August. Uh, we'll be well represented there. And um, that's uh, over 3,000 folks have signed up for that. <clears throat> so that should be a great event. And it's packed full of very good, uh, it's a very good agenda from stormwater management to wastewater treatment to 911 and all points in between. So uh, that's in August 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th. Yeah. I should know. It's that third week anyway, August. it's somewhere in August. So more to come on that and uh had a good meeting yesterday good. so yep that's it okay commissioner fisher i'll segue right off of that into the, we, at the meeting yesterday we had a, a presentation on pfas mm -hmm. which is the chemical that's in fire retardants and it's in other it's um, everywhere like scotch guard and teflon and stuff like that um it wasn't a very positive <laughs> presentation because the wells that have been um, tested in Maryland so far, uh, if you're looking at the, and look at parts per trillion of PFAS that's in the, in, in the wells. Um, right now, I think the, the threshold is 20 parts per tr trillion, and there's only a couple wells in the state of Maryland that are above that. But the threshold that the, I guess the EPA is looking at is 0 0.1 something parts per trillion no wells past that that would be every well in maryland has to have some re remediation but the interesting part about that is there's not a, a measurement tool out there that can measure that low mm -hmm. 
So why do you set a standard that you can't measure for? The lowest that you can measure for is 12 parts per trillion. Okay, if that's the lowest you can measure for, why set a standard below that? It doesn't make sense to me, and it hasn't, it's not the adopted standard, but we were told yesterday that probably, since they put it out there, they're probably gonna go with that. It makes no sense. But uh, that happens a lot where things don't actually make sense and get passed. Insert EPA here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at that thing, and when, you, when we're listening to that, I'm thinking, <laughs> the absurdity to use one of your words. I'm surprised you didn't say that, but it, it was the absurdity of that. I did it ask was. a question on behalf of <laughs> you the city. Did. He did, and it was try to get a little bit of yeah of um, information on funding coming back to help with those wells that have been uh, identified as being affected, and and that we're already answer? Uh, what what the answer was. We'll what? wait and see because yeah. we don't know yet. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, and, and it's just. I mean, you try to be proactive and get some things done, and, and if you are, you really don't get any help. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and that's basically was the answer so far. And I was at the Westminster City Council meeting the other night, and I say the Mayor Becker is here today, not just because I was at her meeting the other night, but she <laughs> came for other reasons. <laughs> and <laughs> a well-run meeting. I like to go to meetings that are well-run, get started on time, progress through, kind of like ours, <laughs> and finish at a, at a timely hour. I appreciate that. Um, also, I want to mention that, the, as everyone knows, elections are coming up soon. Um, there's a lot of forums that are on that you can go to the community media center and see and what the candidates are saying. You can go to the voters guide. You can go to the League of Women, the 411 vote. You can also go to the Baltimore Sun voters guide. There's a lot of information out there. Please check out the information. Don't vote off of a sign, off of a mailer that that you get. Look, check out information. See if the candidate actually reflects your views, and if they do. I would think that's who you would want to vote for. And please get out and vote. That's all I have. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. And uh, early voting starts on the 7th through the 14th, and then the primary is on the 19th. And uh, I do believe our Board of Elections worked very well uh, locally with the state in getting everything set up. And, um, you know, real strong yeoman's work. So, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate those comments. It's, it's a civil duty. Um, yesterday I had the opportunity to highlight a great part of Carroll County and that's uh, the Infinity Center down in Eldersburg uh, off of 26. It deals with uh, autistic children um, from their infancy, basically ages, well, toddler, I guess. Uh, yeah, 18 months toddler, that's a toddler, um, through about five years old. And um, what's cool is it's run by Humanum and Humanum uses apprenticeship programs and earn grants and a lot of other opportunities working with the state with labor. So I was able to take the former Secretary of Labor and Commerce, uh, Secretary Schultz, through that. So she was, you know, very appreciative seeing the fruits of her labor and work in, to establish those apprenticeship programs. Um, and next step is to work with the Infinity Center and uh, nest them into uh, the school system. So I have an upcoming meeting with the school system and the Infinity Center to focus on our children and their needs. Um, so to me, that's a priority uh, here in Carroll County. Um, before your MAKO meeting, uh, gentlemen, I had a subcommittee meeting uh, and to start looking at the, you know, which, which are our priority is going to be and we're going to start hopefully whittling that down I don't think there was much whittling <laughs> that happened yesterday morning it was more of just a reception of the uh, information Actually, it sounded like it was yeah. good whittling we, we got a few we got it went from 40 to 25 according yeah. to Laura that's, yeah that's never happened before oh really I've sat on that okay. for seven years or okay. eight years down oh. Okay. You, that's a good start. Oh, change I, your expectations. I, yeah. I, I was. Yeah, that's a good I, I was, start. Honestly, I was, you know, looking for a 15 or 10 to 15. So, okay, that's good. Um, and uh, so I look forward to uh, continuing that conversation with uh, all our colleagues across the state with Mako and our colleagues here. Um, yeah, like it was mentioned, July 4th coming up. And really enjoy the summer. Uh, you know, it's time to take off the ties. It's time to have an open collar, time to relax, time to put, uh, you know, family in front of us and be with each other. Uh, 
to me, that is a strong part of being priority here in Carroll County and, uh, and enjoy it. There's, there's challenges always around us, but uh, working together, we get a whole lot done. So, okay, that's my two cents for this morning. Let's get right Before into it. Before we do, if you don't mind, yes, you have to mention that today's Mr. Burke's birthday. It is. <sighs> Happy birthday, Mr. Burke. You're 22? I had to mention it for you, that's all. Do we get to slap you or punch you or <laughs> hit you or? No spankings. No, there's, I mean, there's a large group in here. Should we sing? I don't know. No. I'd rather be slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Chris Rock? Robbie, Robbie, let's uh, we're going to do this in the most professional manner. Line up, okay? <laughs> let's just keep talking to see how, how red that face could get. I mean, it's starting to get to the three, four different shades, and we're going to get there. So, But I do appreciate that. Uh, happy 60th birthday to our best legal advisor here in Carroll County. That's uh, one that's in the room. pushing it a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with uh, all right with our FRF <laughs> update. Turn first. Yeah. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Mark. Mark. Who wants to come up? Oh. No. You want us to come up? Yeah. Sure. Come on up. Sure. Um, all star cast. Yeah. Back. Okay. I was like, that was seven slides. Yeah. That was good. We were starting well. <laughs> Start on the last one. <laughs> oh, here. Slide slide show. Show. Yeah. There we go. Very good. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, Debbie Stanford, Grants Office. I'm here with Jason Green, Department of Public Works, and Mark Ripper, IT, to answer any questions that you might have specific to their projects. Um, our last update on the FRF plan was in March, so we are back with um, a, a look at, um, we're going to look at your current funding allocations. Um, we'll look at the state awards that we've received for broadband to date. Um, you wanted an overview of how the municipalities were spending their FRF funding, so we'll take a look at that. Um, look again at the municipal water requests and then potentially make a decision about those projects. You, this is very small on the screen, but you have it in your packet. Um, all of your funding is currently allocated. We have received all of the funding as well from the federal government, so it's in our bank account. For your reference, if you want to ask specifics about any project, there is a, a, a each project is numbered. Um, and I've added the status. All projects are moving. Um, I, I'm going to point out a couple of things, um, but all projects are moving. With the, the only one that we have not committed yet, it's allocated but not committed, is the remainder of the fiber connection money. And Debbie, um, this, this is available to the community, this slide? Correct. correct? Okay. Yes. yes. So I, I apologize that it is small font, but it's it definitely is. available. And I don't know if I can make it any bigger. So. But yes, it is. Ms. Stanner, for I know this one was it item nine for yes. the historic jail was withdrawn. What's this? Why? That was one that I wanted to point out to the board. That's a change from the last time. Since the uh, sheriff's headquarters has moved up in the CIP, and that was going wow. to be a very expensive Makes renovation, sense. and Jason can certainly speak more to it because there are no, um, there's no current air conditioning there that it made sense to, um, to withdraw that and to move the HVAC down into the other projects. Um, I will also say that we have two under design and we are waiting, the other four are pending until we get cost estimates back on the top two uh, requests. And that was a very good call because I went over and toured that old building and it, the old stone building is just not inducive at all for the modern technology we need to apply. So Mr. Green, thank you. Okay. Um, so as I said, um, the HVAC, we're doing the first two and then wait to see what the quotes are for that before we move down the list and to the rest of the HVAC projects. Of course, municipal water projects, project eight are still pending your decision. And then 22 is the fiber connections. There's, we were waiting for the state broadband decisions. We have those now. Um, so any questions about the project list? The municipal water supply, we had talked about possibly putting more money into that, but you're saying all the money's already been allocated. So is there any additional money put into that? So right now you have 2.2 million. Right. 
Um, and so we can talk about that. That's one thing that I, I have a couple options for you. I want okay. you to see what is eligible and how much you're short. So that'll be part of the presentation. All right, thank you. And thank then you. I have a couple of ideas, but you know, it, just to spark the discussion. And Mark, you've done a, a great job with the team in getting grants for the county uh, in addition to this. Are there any other grants that are still pending um, that you're working through that will either adjust this cost or what, what are your thoughts? Next slide. Next, it's a segue. <laughs> was that, did you set that I up did that. intentionally? I, I did a segue for you. This was Thank all you about you. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. I appreciate it. Okay, go ahead, Mark. I love it when I anticipate questions. I hate it when you ask <laughs> questions that I don't anticipate. So, so far, we're doing great. Um, so this is an overview of the broadband money that we applied, that we've applied for it to date in the first table. So we have been awarded just over $12.5 million in federal pass-through state, um, which would um, serve potentially 1,500 households. Um, there's county match in there. Some of that, those early, those first couple of grants were actually county dollars. Um, then the infrastructure and neighborhood grant, you used FRF money to match those projects. There are four pending opportunities coming up. These will also pass through the state. You can see what the potential award to the state is. We don't have any details about those projects, but we anticipate you know, we will certainly look at each one of them and apply if there's any, um, you know, if there's a good project that we can apply for. But we assume that we will apply for all four of those. Um, but details pending. We don't know what the what the what they will offer and and what we will be able to apply for. So that's where we are with the state broadband. All right. When you say these uh, are, are awarded, are they gone out to bid already? Do we people are, are we ready to move forward with these projects? So. Th um. I can talk that yep. with you. The first two there on the list, Halter Road and Garrett Road, Comcast has already started those builds. They're expected to be completed by December of this year. Um, it was part of the grant requirement for them to get those done. Um, Sullivan Road, is um, work is being done to try and move that one forward. The $10 million was just awarded about a month ago. Um, we had a conversation um, with Quantum Internet Service, who was the winner of that, and they are moving forward in the process. Now that $10 million, they have five years to complete that build um, for those 1,206 homes. So it's not something that's going to be completed in the next year or two. There will be sections that will be over time, but it's, they have five years to totally complete that. And then the neighborhood grants, um, there were five of those that were awarded um, and they have to be completed within a, a two year period. So um, as we move forward. The, um, the, the 1,200 homes, um, there's a priority list, I would imagine, of those 1,200. Well, there's the list that we can't prioritize. Well, we can, we can always tell people what we would like them to have them build, uh -huh. but we can't instruct them to actually do that. They have to decide what's best for them. Conum picked out, looking at the unserved and uh -huh. underserved areas of the county, found 1,200 homes that they thought that fit well, and most of those are in um, the north central portion, running from Westminster north. Right. Um, they are moving forward. So and I, the the reason I'm just bringing it up is um, expectation management for those homes. You know, if if it's a four year or five year project, you know, do the residents have an expectation that this will be complete in not tomorrow, like you said, but in two years or two and a half years, whatever it may be. How, uh, is that possible? We will is that be able possible? to provide that information as we move forward. Yeah. Um, one of the issues that we're having right now, and it's not just Carroll County, it's, it's nationwide because of all this fiber construction, is actually getting the fiber. <laughs> so we can do all of the build, get the conduit in the ground, have everything done, but we may not have the supply of fiber for a while. Right now we're looking at a six to 10 month lead time um, to get fiber and it's because wow. everybody in the United States wants it and it just can't produce enough of it at this point. Wow. I can answer your question. No. I'll start forwarding the emails that I get to you. <laughs> what does that mean? They want it next week and they no, think no, they're getting I know. it next week. So that's that's so that's I'll, the whole point is. Yeah, I'll start forwarding what, them to you and you can no, take I'm, care of that. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with forwarding. Well, we will be able to it provide has, estimates in the future, it, in the yeah, near future, yeah. probably it, in the next three right. to four months. We'll have a much right. better idea how those right. bills are going right. to go. Right. Because so, those, those emails, you know, 
however many there are, providing them the expectations, you know, is important and sure. communicating. So if you have the ability with this to provide over the next five years, you know, in you know, relative terms, sure. That's a great thing, you know, because you're right. Everybody wants it today or tomorrow. Right. So, Putting out a timeline, I think, would be very appropriate. Yeah. So it's people know. And, and, and the timeline is not an exact timeline, but this is projected of what's exactly. going to happen. So people can see this is where I am. This is the timeline. And then maybe some of the emails will stop. Probably not. But, yeah, but they, at least they'll have a timeline out there. And I think that's very important to get out right. there. And, and, the, and the other thing we're already working on, commissioners, is I've already worked, started working in my GIS department, is we're going to put a page up on the website that will allow people people to actually go in and put in their address and tell them if they're in a build and if so what the okay. build yeah that's good that's great yeah that would be good because that's the challenge now as, as they're anticipating the build and they see their roads on here the folks that aren't listed are, are starting to yell louder sure so while that all sounds wonderful it's not because well, the, what's the, not wonderful I'm not the, sure the folks that aren't in the build are further out now but they need, but so, so they need to know yeah, if they, they do, are within it's this. It's creating a lot of angst. Well, they they may not be farther out. Um, they they there are first first of all there are four other grants right. and there's the county money that um, right. so beyond the 3.2 million that we've spent here as a county match, um, we have another 15. Um, you know. Something. Eleven point yeah. right. nine million. Right. So there was fifteen right. million. Well, right. there's seventeen point eight million right now allocated to broadband across right. our infrastructure. You know the projects that we're doing right. to county facilities, the grant, the match to these grants, and then what we haven't released yet. Right. And an RFP. And we will be putting out an RFP in July for our money. Now that we know what the state has awarded, we're going to put out an RFP yeah. for the county match, so yeah. people will be able to apply. Yeah, and that that was my original question before we flip sides which is which is great is are there other grants federal or state that we're also going after while you're ready to put out your rfp yes those are the four that are on that list there. okay so there's no more than what we're looking at right now what we're looking at right now as far as okay. we know no. okay yeah i think um putting something on the web like you said having a timeline like was shared is important so people will then expect it's happening or it's not happening or if it's happening it's within such a time period um, I mean now is all of this attention up in the Northwest is the is the 90 percent need of what's going on or is it across Carroll County I'm sorry ask that question again. as far as the gaps in coverage as far as the gaps in coverage right now <clears throat> What's happening, commissioners, is that there is infrastructure in Carroll County that is currently around the incorporated towns, and people are moving out from there. This first $10 million that Quantum has is going to expand that out further in the county, but it's still not going to get out to the edges. And what has to happen, unfortunately, is they got to build those middle miles there, right. and okay. then once they're done, then they can apply for additional funding to expand those out even further. We can't go out into the northeast portion of the county. There's no infrastructure to get us there. I into, right. Yeah. Okay. So Comcast put in for a state grant. They were not awarded it. Um, we've been in conversations with them. I think they're definitely going to apply to the county for that. They're in a little bit different situation than some of these other vendors because they do have a lot of infrastructure out in the county, and what they'll be able to do if they were a successful awardee is they'd be able to fill in all those little gaps that are missing because a road doesn't meet the 20 homes per mile requirement under the current contract right. that we have with them. Right. So, and again, you know, it, unfortunately it's, it is going to take time. We really need to emphasize that. And while we'll be able to provide people estimates and all know that the big issue is going to be getting that final piece of fiber right. in to make that final connection. Right. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions about Just one one kind of sidebar question is uh, it was brought it was asked to me about um, down in the uh, Eldersburg area Comcast is the you know largest vendor are there opportunities for other vendors to come into the 
Yes, uh, and there, there was actually one other vendor who put in for a state grant that was not awarded a grant, was Talkie, um, has an interest in moving into Maryland. They did receive an RDOF, a grant, a Rural Digital Opportunity Fund um, grant for the northern portion of Carroll County. Um, unfortunately, they it's only about $200,000 a year for five years, um, but they have expressed an interest in, in here in the county. Anybody can come in and... Um, build it's just a matter of i guess they're looking for their return on investment yeah to, to yeah make it worthwhile for them to do and, okay. and with the funding that we have we're i mean at this point we're getting another 1500 homes connected with our 10 million hopefully uh -huh. we'll get another thousand connected but there's still even with that estimate we're still going to have probably 2000 2200 homes that aren't on right the grid yet right okay so, and the federal government's I mean, I, I, the other thing I would suspect, and this is just a guess on my part, but based on what the federal government's been talking about and what we hear, I think that these grant opportunities are going to continue to happen. While we only have four right now, I think the federal government is going to continue to um, be releasing additional grants to continue this. Um, okay. Which might be important too, because this grant will end. You know, so right. we have all of our money, and we can't get fiber, and we can't complete the builds right. by the end of the grant period. We want some of the grants that will extend beyond 26 to allow us to continue those builds. Yeah, having the the lead time on fiber, that's that's scary. You know, having you know, but as long as it's not in cargo ships. <laughs> in the Pacific Ocean and it's just manufacturing you know here in the States at least we have more control over it but wow so and like other things I think over time as they continue to to get the you know the, the pressure will come down and we'll be able to get it sooner then okay. so. and our vendors are very good they have they've already all of them have already been working on this and placing the orders and and that type of thing to, to get this moving forward. So it's not like people have been waiting for um, us to, to tell them to do anything. They're already in the process. The orders have been placed. And yeah. Hmm. Okay. So let's move on then to municipal water requests. So the first piece of this is that the board asked to see an overview of how the munic municipalities were allocating their FRF funding. Um, the list is not complete because not every municipality has allocated all their funding yet. Um, but you'll see the theme, the, you know, more than half of the money right now is allocated to water and sewer. Um, and both Mount Air or both Hampstead anticipates that m the majority of their allocation will also go to water and sewer. Um, some other uses, um, you know, a variety of other uses, and, and then the three projects that are eligible for our, our uh, municipal water um, allocation. So I won't go through the table. Do you have any questions, though, about this? What, is it, what does the lost revenue mean for West So Minnesota? lost revenue, that we took the lost revenue here at the county. It allows you, every everyone who received the FRF grant could claim 10 mil, up to $10 million in lost revenue, and you can use it for general government okay, okay. purposes. So it gives you more flexibility in how you can use the funding. We did that, although we didn't allocate it to that, it get, does give us flexibility. And I was a little surprised that not more of the municipalities yeah. Uh, yeah elected lost revenue and just took it as a as a you could use it much more flexibly yeah so, I, was, I was thinking right. the same i'm a little thing. surprised well, but why didn't they was it just not educated in doing it or? well if you're going to do it if you're going to do water and sewer i mean you still have to follow federal procurement whether you categorize it as lost revenue or <clears throat> as a eligible frf mm -hmm. project so if you were going to do water and sewer projects it really didn't make very much difference hmm. okay honestly but the theme is water and sewer right. the majority even without all the mo f money fully allocated more than half of the municipal allocations are going to water and sewer projects at this point since the municipalities are getting their money through the state have they received their second 
I'm not sure. You received the second tranche um, one year after the first, and I know there were delays right. because they needed to certify budgets, and there were uh, some additional hoops that municipalities had to jump through. So we just got our second um, allocation, or second tranche last month. Right. So it may be a little bit more time before they get there and have it in their bank accounts. What is Mount so, Airy's other uses? Um, I, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember. I can certainly look at that and provide that for you. Thank you. So the water projects that are eligible for the money that we're going to be cooperating with the municipalities for is on that last oh. list right there. Correct. And it's, and go ahead. We'll look at that okay. on the next slide. I've got the list of projects. And there were some changes. Hmm. I'm just prompting you forward. Yes, I know. <laughs> Dude, we're, it's we're really working to well. Move, move forward. <laughs> I was thinking this morning, this might be the last time I present on FRF, and now I've gotten pretty good at it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if we're ready, I, that is the next slide. That'll show you all the projects that were eligible. And there were some shifts in the last time you saw it, so I want to talk to you about that. Okay. Okay, so this is a list of all the requests that you received for um, municipal water projects. We, you had asked for water projects, just to refresh your memory. memory. Water, water projects, yeah, water that was FRF eligible. And originally we had $3 million allocated mm -hmm. to, this, um, to this effort. In March, because you had increased need for um, the Ag Center parking lot project, and you had an additional request for the behavioral health RFP, we moved some of the money from municipal water and reduced that to 2.2 million. Um, now, after the presentation to you in March, Westminster reached out to me. We met with them and they provided additional information about their water project. Given that additional information, I believe that it is eligible for FRF. Originally, it was not in that category. So that one moved into the eligible category. New Windsor, in the meantime, um, received all the funding that they needed for their water main project from the state. So they withdrew their request to our, to our pot of money. Um, I took the time to reach out also to the rest of the municipalities and talk to them about our decisions. In light of Westminster giving me additional information, I wanted to make sure that everybody understood how we how we made the decisions. No other projects changed. Um, so now you have three that are eligible, Westminster's Pure Water Project, Manchester, and Union Bridge Water Main Projects, and they were originally eligible um, when we met in March. So right now we have 3.6 in recommended projects, and you have 2.2 million um, in that line right now. So you have any questions about what is eligible and what the yeah. list looks like right now? Mm -hmm. so go ahead. My, not about what is eligible. I got all that. Is there any way to? Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to let him ask the question. Next slide, please. <laughs> next slide. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So this is where you stand. We have 3.6 and some change in requests and, the, and then allocated to just over 2.2. So we're overspent in that cab category by 1.4 million. So just to spark your discussion, I have a couple of suggestions or options, um, you could reallocate some of the broadband funding. That is, we're, it's a pot that we haven't, we haven't spent yet and we haven't put out to RFP. If we did that, if we moved 1.4 million from broadband to municipal water, we could fund the three that are eligible. That would mean that you have still allocated half of the FRF money to broadband. Um, with a total commitment of almost $30 million between the state grants and our funding with the four opportunities that are still pending. Another idea is to allocate it proportionally. We have about 60% of the money that you need um, and we could just reduce everybody's and, and give them 60% of the funding that they requested. I mean, we could do it a million different ways. These are just two ideas um, to spark discussion about how you want to handle these requests. I wouldn't take anything away from the broadband requirements. I mean, we, we saw that was such a need. I mean, it's been a need forever, and this pandemic just highlighted it as such a, you know, requirement that, you know, I think every dollar we can afford, um, especially 
if there's expectations. I mean, that's that's my two cents, you know, uh, about it. Um, but that, I, that's just me. So. Yeah, I have to agree. I don't actually want to take any money away from broadband. I know Mark's happy about that. But because <laughs> I do think it is an urgent need in this county for the people that are not served by broadband are, are you know, email and text and Commissioner Wance and all. And I appreciate you texting him. But uh, I understand that. And I think we need to do the best we can to, to push broad, you know, broadband as, as, as much. And I, I actually I do like the second option at the 60 percent level because everybody gets something. Uh, they don't get everything they ask for, but they certainly get some money from us to help move those projects forward. I know Commissioner Weaver loves that second one, don't you, Commissioner? Any other thoughts? I mean, you know, it's all you important. Say it, but you? Yeah. you know how I feel. Yeah. I mean, I'm the one know, money for broadband. I we have to get broadband out there, uh, <laughs> uh, and we're the only way they're going to get it. Yeah. I mean, the right. county is the only way it's going to go out into the northern part of the county. Yep. Wow, it's a tough one. Well. Yeah. Okay. You do have a staff recommended motion if you just. Okay. Well. Give, no, I give, mean give it, when you're ready. Just a sec. Um. Yeah, I mean, if you're. I, I, mean, I can't take any. I can't take a dollar from broadband. I just can't. It's just it's it's too. It's it's so volatile and it's something that is so necessary, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm just I'm I'm just tired of the constant delays. Well, we can't do that because it's, you know, it's and I understand that, but it's just, it's exhausting. Uh, these, these folks need broadband and they need it yesterday. So I can't take anything from that. Are we getting a program manager still? Are we hiring somebody to focus full attention on the broadband requirements i mean mark you're we we posted that position previously yeah. and we did not get any candidates so we put it on hold until we could, any any qualified candidates for that so i started looking at some other options um we could post it again and see if we get anybody this time to take the position <clears throat> but i've also had conversations with several different companies that have um, yeah. started to do that as part of their um, operations and right. we could put out an RFP to them to ask them to help us provide some um, management on there. I think the big thing is going to be what you raised earlier is just the number of people calling in with questions is going to take you know a majority right. of the right. time as we start to move this forward and begin the process. Um, Does it have to yeah. be full time? No. Well that's the other question. I mean right now you know, we've got um, $12 million allocated for fiber builds in the county, and we're going to do another 10. I don't know exactly how that's going to fall, and you know, from a, from a time perspective, we've never had that right. kind of um, position before. But I can imagine, and, and the other thing that, that um, Debbie had talked about is we could take the money for that position from the $10 million um, shortfall that they allocated, and that would allow this person then to make it a full-time position to actually deal um, with all of the fiber issues in the county, not just the fiber issues for um, the grant itself. Yeah, I just, yeah, well, I mean, I had a conversation with an individual the other day that, that retired from IT, the, right. from the IT industry, right. and, you know, he suggested to me if there's ever anything, but he said, I don't really want to work full-time, mm -hmm. but, you know, I've got the expertise, right. and I've worked in private sector, I've worked in public sector. And I'm thinking, geez, what a great guy to plug into something. But there's a lot of folks out there that don't want nine to five, right? Five days a week. So maybe we should be a little bit more flexible with plugging somebody in and not just doing it the way we've always done it. Here's the job posting. You work Monday to Friday. Maybe we should be thinking outside of the fiber a little bit. Right. And we can we can have those discussions. One of the big things that this person would be doing, and and I know from experience that this can be a full time job is we need a liaison to be able to deal with BGE, with Verizon, with the pole attachments, with making sure everything's the way that it's supposed to be. And unfortunately, that's nine to five right. work. Well, that's yeah, when I, BGE I and that, Verizon. You get the right person, I think they could plug it in, a, yeah. in, so, in the right way. Yeah. I, I'm just suggesting a, a sure. different way mm -hmm. in order to get somebody on board because you, it's taking away from your responsibilities mm -hmm. to do this. Not sure. You're doing a tremendous job with it, Mark, but. If, if somebody there was focused yep. just on this, yep. 
I agree. I, Absolutely agree. So maybe that's a way to look at it. Get the, somebody uh, in that's. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. So, and I'm going to share with you a company that I want you to look at, and that's Hartman Executive Advisors. Okay. Um, I am not affiliated with them, uh, but I have known them for quite some time, and they do strategic and IT consulting. They just won a, uh, a bid, I believe, down in North Carolina with a uh, county and they are working with other counties um, across the country. Okay. Um, so reach out to them. I can give you their points of contact and uh, their business development people. But um, if it's them, that's fine. I don't really care. But as I think it's that type of approach that can take on this okay. type of role. Um, and that's the advantage so, to have one of the advantages to doing a company as opposed to an individual right, right. is all the experience the company has right. rather than just so, the experience of <clears throat> just, just one let individual. You know, there, yeah. Now we will have to put out an RFP for this under the federal course. requirements. But, but I, I, I'm just yeah. saying, to, to, what but I'll I want make sure you to that do they get a, take a look at. It's not necessarily contact them, but take a look at their skill set. Sure. And if that's the skill set that is a that is, um, you know, what you're looking for then you can look at an RFP saying, yeah, that's the type of work that's necessary. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not saying sole source anything. I'm not saying go to, but I'm saying look at who they are. And uh, what you just described it fits them to a T. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, my recommendation is that we go with option one. Uh, you know, unless what? you want to. You mean no, two? Option two, excuse me. <laughs> option two, unless there's any other uh, issues. I mean, did you have a staff recommendation you want to that's, make? That's or? it. I mean, no, no it's uh, not that. It's just right. it, if you want to read the motion, it's just I'll, partial. I'll make the motion funding. the Board of County Commissioners directs staff to move forward with the municipal water projects with partial funding. I'll second. Any other discussion on this? Really good layout, really good discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, what else we want? Commissioner to Boucher didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. hard against. You're against? Yes, four, sir. Four one. Okay. Wait. Four one. You you. He's against. Agree? Oh, against. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Um, what else we want to talk about? <laughs> are you, are you going to give us updates periodically? I mean, we're only here for another six months, but um, I, I was teasing when I yes, I'm sure that I'll with come back. Pendings and the design phases, and yeah. you know, yes, we started, can started blah blah blah. I'd I'd like to get at least, yeah, especially when it comes to broadband. Yeah, I'd like to get weekly, yeah. but I'll I'll be a little bit more realistic and say monthly. But would, you would like to, you would like us to come back monthly with I, a status I think report. It's important to come okay. back monthly with these projects. I mean, it is it's a it's a yeah. chunk of change, and yes. it's it's garnered a lot of conversation from yeah. all four corners of the county, and um, the continuous updates until you know, the next bunch that comes in might not care, but I think this bunch does. So I'd like to hear monthly, if you can, on all projects, on all the projects. Yep. Okay. Just to give us an update on where you know where they are. Including the municipalities that are using the money, you know, how, okay. how are they doing? Just a simple, hey, what's going on, you know, that would be great. Yeah, transparency and communications is huge, knowing what the county's doing, but what the municipalities have received and where they lie, their priorities, and then we can work together and say, okay, this is how we can either provide resources or, you know, understand so we're not conflicted. I mean, that, that is important. Uh, yeah, I, monthly or as needed. Well, monthly and or as needed type of. Approach. We'll start with monthly and and then. That's great. That'd be good. Thanks. And commissioners, Commissioner Wance has been doing this for quite a while. If you have any um, requests from citizens, please feel free to forward them to me because myself and Carol Shaver, we don't just answer their question on whether or not they're in the list. We actually work with them to see if there may be other possibilities that would allow them. Um, to get a connection so and you do please. very good you both you and Carol even though Carol says oh Wance again <laughs> uh, you do you both do a great job of outreach and and you know providing that opportunity so yeah uh, you know I've got 
I've got two that came across my desk yesterday afternoon again, and I'll throw them out again. But, um, you know, as the anticipation grows and people see, that's another reason why I want to see these monthly updates, because as people see these things, they're like, well, wait, wait, what about me? Where, where am I? Mm -hmm. And I've got at least four roads right now that are in that category of, wait, what about me? And two of those roads are, I can see the box. It's right there. And it's just, it's getting exhausting. So. Well, and I would hope that when we come back to, we will know more about what the state, the next um, grants that the state will release. So we'll also give you updates on any future grants for for broadband and where yeah. we're at with those. Because a couple of those dates are the end of July mm -hmm. for, you know, a, a, um, application. So and we would be yeah. issuing what you, you're applying for soon. <laughs> And we would come before you when we apply, but you know we can give you updates okay. as we see those opportunities. Because one is for middle mile, one is for connectedness, and Corey is certainly you know much more in tune with what those grants are offering. But some are for those very difficult, long last mile connections. So they they are anticipating some of what we're going to need. Okay, hey, Corey, just for the record, is is there internet in your area? You don't have to go any further. I just, I was, I was curious because I know, you know that I know where you are and. There is now, just recently. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank um, you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boucher, did you want to share you any of your opinions or no? Uh, I'm just, glad you listened intently to what I had to say. I just wanted to state that water is vital to life broadband is not and it's basically how it came down at conclusion they're both very vital but if you need to separate your priorities I think water is the biggest priority and that's it okay let's talk about Springdale Jack Jack let's talk about Springdale he's not coming up no you don't want to come up talk about the, uh, yeah. the tank or what are we doing up there? All right. Good morning, Commissioners. We're here today to ask your approval to award a contract to Subsurface Technologies Incorporated for the replacement and relocation of a heating and oil tank at the Springdale Preparatorial School in the amount of $227,000. The amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. The bid was advertised on March 4th. Uh, the Office of Procurement received two bids that are listed below with subsurface technologies being coming in at the lowest bid and being the most responsive and responsible. <coughs> Morning, Commissioners. We're here today for a decision to award subsurface technologies the contract to replace the and relocate the heating oil tank on the property of the old New Windsor Middle School. This will be a joint effort between the Bureau of Facilities and Economic Development. The Maryland Department of Environment conducted a routine heating oil audit on the property. It found the property in violation of the COMAR, which is Code of Maryland Regulations for MDE. Uh, the issue re was related to the 27-year-old 10,000-gallon underground oil storage tank used when the school was built. Um, as the owner of the property, the county is obligated to make the necessary repairs. The current underground 10,000 gallon heating oil tank supplies fuel to the facility. Uh, with the new regulations and continue ongoing inspections, uh, we feel it's the county's best interest to get this 27 year old tank out of the ground, remove it above ground, um, and uh, replace it with a 6,000 gallon tank, which will follow the 22 Comar regulations per MDE. Um, what questions do you uh, have regarding this? The main well, question I have is why are we paying 100 percent of this? I mean, we're, I just, you know, it's a long history, but the school, we're supposed to sell it and all this other stuff, and now it's being leased, and I, we all worked on that and agreed to it, but Mm -hmm. Now, anything that comes up, we're responsible for. And I realize it's Comar, but we can't yes. work out some agreement with at least a 50-50 split on the cost or something of that sort. I mean, it just seems more realistic to me. It feels like a sucking chest wound, you know, like we're in a swamp. 
Well, I guess for me it begs the question of what in the world's going on at Springdale Prep. I that's beyond can't your, answer I that. You're not, no, 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 that's okay, and you're not just, prepared I'm, to say. I mean, it's just, no, it's ongoing. Right, you know, right. we're renewing the lease, we're doing this, we're doing that. I mean, right. I, I don't, I don't, I, I understand we have to do this. Right. Right. Um, so that's the first question. What's going on at Springdale Prep? And Jack, that's a question for you. And number two, I guess for me, um, is, well, maybe start with that one. But I, I just, I agree that, that maybe there should be some sort of a share process here. I, I don't know. I mean, is the anticipation that they're going to continue to to function up there? I mean, are, are they at? How many kids do we have there? I, I don't know. I, I want to make sure the facility doesn't go downhill and sits there and, mm -hmm. and you know is, is not viable at all. We need to keep it viable right. in yeah. the event that they don't. It's going to fall back on us, and yeah, that's why I think I it's get in that. best interest but, for us to fix this correctly now, yeah. or it's going to come back and haunt us later. I mean, I agree it has to be fixed. Yeah, I'm not right. saying that right. at all. I do right. agree it has to be fixed, and it should be fixed. I just don't agree that we should spend 100% of the money. We should pay 100%. I just don't think it's right. What are your thoughts, Jack? Um, Springdale is uh, waiting for us. We're holding us up the lease. Uh, they do not have a lease with us. But they've been paying month to month. Uh, we did raise the rent to cover this tank. Uh, we, we were told, I was told it was, that there was going to be about eighty five dollars to $100,000. We raised the rent. To pay for that eighty-five to one hundred thousand dollars, we did not do it for two hundred, you know, thirty-some right. thousand dollars. Um, they're very optimistic now that they're going to get more students coming over from China, Japan, Vietnam, and uh, Brazil. That they will have international students. They've hired a new president that replaced uh, Johnny or replaced, uh, you know, Ashley. Uh -huh. So. Um, I think the school is, from what I what they told me, the school is going to be, you know, be a viable source. They have a, the lease is for three years, and they are paying the rent, and there are increases in that rent. We increased them uh, substantially last time. You know, you t you told me to increase it to pay for that, um, but this this came up. Uh, we have to do this. The MDE were in violation, but c commissioner, you know, it's uh, they're paying the rent. The student is. The numbers are going up for them. Uh, they have they have 34 active full-time uh, uh, teachers there or full-time employees there. So, so okay. um, I okay. they're, wait, they're really waiting for us to make this decision to sign the lease. Okay. But they're ready to sign. We've uh, Tim and I've been negotiating with the attorney. But the last we got back, they've met all our stipulations in, in the lease except for this. Because you remember way back when, I don't know, five, six years ago, we said this was one of the things we would do. We would replace the, uh, the tank. And then yeah, we I, found out we're in violation. Right. We, we, I do remember that. Yeah. Well, that, that, you've answered that question, I, and that, I appreciate that. And I guess my, my second question was, within the adopted budget, where, you know, I didn't know we had an adopted budget for that facility, but apparently we do. Uh, beyond the lease monies that come in? Do we have money set aside in your department that we're, that handles maintenance up or what we'll handle the maintenance now so we're not doing anything up there at all they're, they're doing the leases they would 100 percent of all maintenance they're maintaining the fields also yeah, cutting the know, grass doing the snow at all that's correct they're okay, doing they're doing everything in there everything in the school it's a full lease they're taking care of everything they're paying all the utility bills and everything else we're not doing anything that's correct. Yeah. So when they take this tank out and put the new tank in, mm -hmm. uh, hooking the new tank up is part of this part of the deal. We're that not, is correct. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to have to send our guys in there to, to whatever. No, no. It's all going to be contracted out. Um, and Jax did mention uh, the pricing did go up a little bit. Um, I mean, we could have went in there, commissioners, and just replaced the top tank replacement. But in the long run, we still have a 27-year-old tank underground. Yeah that we're still gonna to need to maintain and inspect. So right. that's why yeah. I feel and it, uh, my department feels it's best interest to get this out of the ground yep. so we eliminate anything underground that could cause issues, get it above ground and bring it up to today's standards. Yeah. It, it, let's be clear, for, for me it's a no-brainer. We gotta replace the tank. Right. 
what I'm most concerned about is the process of getting to that point, <laughs> yeah. which seems like we're in the mud. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we put it in four-wheel drive, but we ain't getting nowhere. So financially, did, fiscally, did, looking at it from a fiscal standpoint. So Yeah, I was walking up the hall, so I don't know what got said as I was coming here, but you asked, you said something about, I didn't know this was budgeted. It was not budgeted. Uh, we are, we are going to fund this. There is money remaining in the economic, economic development and infrastructure budget. We will be moving money from there to facilities to pay for this. The $850,000 which you put in the infrastructure fund, right. uh, this year we had a, um, uh, the transfer was about two hundred, I think, two hundred thirty thousand dollars. So it would cover this, taken out of our infrastructure fund at the eight fifty that you okay. that you give. I, mean, I, I, I find that to be a little wonky too. I don't like I don't like that part. Uh, well, I mean, if we agree that we have to pay for it, then we have to find some place to, find to it pay somewhere. For, I got that. It. Yeah, it just seems like we're, I don't know. Where where does the where does the money that we get from there? monthly they're paying monthly is that correct or that's annually? correct they're paying monthly where and their money go where does the where does the monthly the general fund revenue just like any other revenue then why wouldn't we take the money out of the general fund well it is coming out of the general fund okay, we, just, we just said it's coming out of their category there. that's part of the general fund yeah. i mean there's okay. there's Everybody's no separate category. general fund okay. it's all, all the right. general fund okay yeah. very detailed okay category. okay got it but, they do have to pay to fill this tank, right? Oh yeah. Oh, we yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't pay any fuel. We don't pay any heating cost. It's yeah. probably more than putting the tank in. You <laughs> say? <laughs> I, th I think, um, you know, obviously, with all these questions, a comfort level would be to come back, uh, you know, periodically. End of the fi oh, this is. Go ahead. I, I, the, this is the end of the fiscal year today, so I'm that's talking about he's Springdale. Right. He, you're, he, I know where you're going. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. to know what the status is of Springdale as they continue to move forward, because you know we want to see it succeed, and a decision was made to transfer or transition this into this school, so we we want to see it succeed, and yeah. the best way is for us to have that visibility. I believe so. Um, so let's plan on doing that maybe in a month or so. Say, hey, here's the latest with the new leadership and the numbers, okay? Yeah, Jack. that would be good. We do want it to succeed because right. if not, it's shades of eight years ago when we had three schools thrown in our laps. Right. It's your district. So you got any? Sir. You got two cents to well, add? <laughs> yeah, I was waiting until the rest of the conversation is done. You mentioned that they maintain the fields. or air rec councils utilizing the fields they're maintaining? The rec council's not using those fields over there. Just Springdale prep. Just Springdale prep. Okay. I thought maybe that was a benefit for <clears throat> picking up. They maintain the fields, but our rec council would utilize them, sir, or not. From what I know, Commissioner, uh, there could be some side I don't know, but from my understanding, it's just Springdale prep using those fields. Uh -huh. Okay. But this whole rec councils have the ability to use them when that they I'm not sure, Commissioner. It, in the least, in the least states that they're not using the fields or the gym. That they would work with the rec councils. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we can get that up there. I, I don't thought, know if that's happening were, or not. I, yeah. I thought the rec councils were using the fields. Um, same with myself. I thought the same as Commissioner yeah. Rothstein. It would be a nice neighborly thing to do to make it available and project some goodwill towards the county. Because this whole deal with this school is a bad taste, I think, all of our mouths. And as soon as possible, we like to get rid of it and settle the whole thing. Because it seems to be an ongoing wound that's open. And each year that goes by, it seems like we accrue some other expense to maintain this thing. Well, remember, they're paying all the expenses. The county's not paying any expenses right. for anything right. there. Right. Um, we have a sale or a eventual yeah. sale on this. The, the problem is COVID. They, you know, they, they couldn't get the visas from China or Japan coming over. And now it is loosening up. And they feel good about this fall okay. coming in. Yeah. But, uh, well, it's good to be optimistic. I like to hear that. Yeah. Okay, so first step is get the tank replaced. Second step, maybe in about a month or so, we'll get you on the schedule saying just give us an update on what's going on with the school, okay? I appreciate it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Wance, for asking me to chime in. I move that the Board of Commissioners award a contract for heating oil tank replacement and relocation to Subsurface Technologies, Inc., an amount of 
$227,000. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any other discussion? Seeing here none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Lyburn, nice suit. You look like a Mississippi attorney. I'm dating with attorneys this afternoon. So there you go. They all wear these suits. So <laughs> yeah. Thank you. The good piece about that discussion is we take the stewardship of our dollars very seriously. Yes, thank and, you. Uh, Oh, that was an important discussion. Let's talk about the Saturday Services Pilot Program. Ladies. And Doug, you want to come up? And Stacy, how many days? 37. 37. Mm -hmm. So 36 and a wake up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, Pleased to be in front of you this morning. About two months ago, uh, I started uh, working with Stacy, and then uh, so Stacy Nash, our, Nash, our transit grants manager, Crystal Weinbrenner, executive director of Ride with Us, um, and uh, I started working with the area about two months ago. We we got involved in a lot of discussions and going to a lot of meetings. Uh, one of which, uh, one of the good ideas that uh, has come up, we want to bring before you today, and. I uh, just would like to for you to listen to us and ask any questions, and I'm going to turn it over to Stacy for the meat and potatoes here. All right. Good morning. I'm going to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost lunchtime. It's fine. Um, I'm here with Crystal, the executive director of Ride With Us, um, and we are here to talk to you today about a transit pilot for Saturday services. As long as I have been in this position, and I'm going to assume longer, but we're going to defer to her on that, um, we have been asked about running some sort of Saturday service. And most recently during our transit talk on June 8th, it was brought up again there. Over the years, we've had different Saturday services. Um, for a while, we ran the Westminster Trailblazer on Saturdays, um, but the ridership was almost non-existent, so we discontinued it. We more recently had an on-demand option from 7 to 1 on Saturdays, um, was reservation-based, advanced reservation only. We didn't do same day, but again, low ridership. So we would like to present a new option to you today that we believe will give us the best representation of the need. Um, this pilot would begin Saturday, August 6th, which is conveniently 37 days from now, and run through Saturday, October 29th during the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you give us the green light, we're going to spend all of July to market. Um, a lot of our pilots, I think, haven't had enough push to really give us what they should. Um, so we're going to use all of July to push it out. Um, social media, press releases, we're going to advertise on the buses, and we're going to work with our allied agencies who have been asking us for this Saturday service to push it out to their clients. This would be countywide, um, countywide demand response service. So reservations would be required, um, and based on availability, but same day would be an option if the availability was there. We would follow the current contract terms with our contractor for the hourly rate, and the expenses would be covered by my CARES grant. Um, we plan to base the success or failure of such a service um, on the demand response cost per passenger trip, um, and if it is comparable to the current weekday cost per passenger trip. Right now, um, it is about $35 per passenger trip. It might be different during that time period, but that's what it is right now. Um, if we decide, if it's deemed that the service is to continue, we'll come back in front of you and talk about some funding options and how that would look. Or we'll be back on why we think this service should not be continued, whether we don't have ridership or whatever that case may be. Um, we'll probably come back towards the end of the period, October 20th-ish, give or take, um, just to give you an idea of where that is and what we think we should do going forward. So I think that is everything I have. If I missed anything important, I'm going to turn it over to Crystal. If not, we'll take questions. You said she $35. Mm -hmm. That's 35 Say that one more time to find that $35. $35 per passenger trip. So the cost to the county is $35 for a, a trip, just one way um, for someone to get on the bus. We would that be. It does not include their fare. I mean, their fares come out of that, obviously. But, yeah, but $35 one way? So Correct. seventy dollars trip. round trip. Ugh. That's a lot of money. Um, Transit doesn't pay for itself. It does not. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So so I'm just. I apologize. Just real. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
finish this train of thought. And I appreciate you saying that because I'm looking at what is the return on investment. Because mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. I mean, what if we gave people vouchers for Uber? Yeah, that know? was my idea too. It'd be, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not against, you know, internal, intra public transportation. Um, and, and I like to support it, but I didn't realize that it was like, that's a lot of money. Wow. This is the demand response service that is a little more expensive than our trailblazers. Um, our trailblazer yeah. cost per passenger trip is, is, is depends on the route. Um, our Westminster route is about $15 per, per person, per passenger trip, um, which is our best running route. And, that, and that's each way, Chris? Correct. Starting tomorrow, it's $15.07 <laughs> thanks to the state. <laughs> my, my only question is, you, you tried this and it was strike one, and then you tried it and it's strike two. What gives you the confidence that you're not going to get to strike three? I, I mean, so I, it, I, we actually have not had Saturday service in this way before. Um, so one of the services we offered was a trailblazer service, and it was not utilized very well. And I, which means that you just waited for the bus and if right. It came so the, by, you got the bus right. just went the same okay. fixed route, right, right. Um, which has its you know positives and negatives. And a negative is it obviously doesn't go everywhere a person may need to go on a Saturday, um, and we didn't offer. You know, we don't have same day deviation, so even if someone wanted to go off the route, they couldn't make that that stop. Um, our second iteration of that was very poorly implemented, um, and where we offered Saturday service from seven to one, we didn't advertise it very well. Um, and in addition to that, if there were not enough people to go, then we weren't bringing a driver and a dispatcher in because it didn't make sense. Um, that is that would not be the case this time. This time we would just be open from nine to four, um, and we would take same day reserve. We would run it the same way we do Monday through Friday. Um, and the purpose of this is not just to add service, but it seems like the biggest community concern when we have these public meetings and, and outreach um, is that we don't have Saturday service. So. The only way, as you know, um, at our transit talk, we talk to agencies and explain to them, the only way we can prove that need is if you actually give us the data. Um, so this three-month pilot will allow us that time to first give us 30 days to really push and market this, especially with the agencies that say they need it most, and then will give us a three-month period of time to prove whether or not that's true. Um, so at the end of that three months, if we're really seeing a lot of people call, then perhaps we can extend the pilot and see how that goes. And if not, then the next time we have a community meeting where there's this outcry for Saturday service, we can say, listen, these are it. all the things that we've done and clearly the evidence is not there. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that last part, Crystal. Nicely done. <laughs> yeah. Because really, if they, you know, they, they, they need to know if it, and if it's just one agency, then they should take care of their own. Yeah. I, I hate to be that way, but it's expensive and it's it, 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 it it's is. not going to get any cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy for for people to have a client, a particular client that has this one need, mm -hmm. to generalize it as if we only had this community wide. And we saw that with our evening pilot program as well. That was we didn't have anyone turn out, despite the outcry for needing evening service. So I think that, I do think in both cases, both evening and Saturday, we did a very poor job of marketing. Um, I think our transit talk was very positive and we had a really, really good discussion. And I think of the agencies that showed, they understand uh, what their part in this is to get people you know, on the bus. And they also understand that if they aren't able to do that, then we can't prove that they need the service. So I think we're in a really good place to push this 30-day marketing strategy to get three months going. you have a budget for this set up? Mm -hmm. it, it, would, it would come from, as uh, Stacy mentioned earlier, the, the current CARES, uh, CARES funding, CARES the current funding. CARES grant opportunity. And will you anticipate this will cost to run for three months? Honestly, I, I we haven't put a budget on it. Um, I mean, I have the funding. We have CARES funding that we can use for all operating, so I know it'll be covered. But without having really any idea, I mean, right. we have multiple agencies telling us that they want it, but I mean, we've had the service before and they haven't used it. So somewhere so, between one and 15 And the cost a to a I mean, rider is how much then? 
Well, it would be based on our normal fares, so it would be um, mileage based um, from $4 to $9, depending on how far you're going one way, just like our normal <clears throat> demand response services. So to put the exact number on the pilot, just to, to emphasize that, is difficult unless we know the amount of riders, because we are only paying if we have the riders. So if we, if we don't have anyone in the seat, then it, there's no cost. Right. If we put a butt in the seat, then we have uh, we have that cost. So again, if it if we if what we are hearing from community members about not offering a Saturday service is true, and we put ten people on a bus, then that's simple math at ten times seventy dollars per Saturday. Uh, you know that's that's where we're at. But if not, if it's less than that, then the cost would be less. So the the whole purpose here is you're right. We do get a lot of uh, concerns from the community, from our customers, and we simply want to be able to be data driven and say, look, we check that out. That doesn't work, uh, or does work, and here's what we can do right. beyond that. And a good thing about this, I believe, is that this is going to be on demand. Yes, correct. So you're not going to have a trailblazer running around the route. Correct. with no one on it all day long especially with the cost of fuel today that's a big advantage on demand right. second thing is actually this won't cost the county any money at all because it comes from the cares funding for the pilot program so yes. it doesn't come out of our funding at all the taxpayer so dollars. this would be the best time to do this it's not you know you got the cares money to use why not use it why not get the data let's find out what's yeah. going on with this and then we can move ahead with it or not move ahead with it but i like the idea it's on demand so you don't have the bus isn't running unless there's someone to, to ride on a bus so it's, it, you know and it's really and it is taxpayer money but it's not costing us it's, it's not. it also well, affords us the opportunity to collect the right well, data so we'll know if there's people yeah. in eldersburg that yeah. want it on saturday yeah. we'll know that that's with the a selling fixed, point right, right. There. and with our evening right. pilot we right. did a five mile radius from westminster so it was not open to the county right. um, and right. with our trailblazer obviously very fixed you know a two mile route so it's just not open to everyone and we can also then target if we just if we find in these right. three months that the right. only people that are riding in is eldersburg we could right. then have a saturday option just in eldersburg but, so it wouldn't be a countywide going forward or something like that like we can tailor what the service yeah. would be once we have the data i mean the biggest issue to me is being good stewards of our taxpayer money and um subsidizing appropriately i mean we we look at it and there we subsidize different things all over the place but we have to be very careful i understand that there's cares money but it's not free money you know it's right. money with a purpose um the vehicles that will be used will they be the buses yes do we have vans it'll be a, our smaller vehicles so it'll be a smaller it'll be yes. designed to be small but it will also still be wheelchair equipped so we, we yes. will still be okay. able to offer the service to everyone because that's who i would figure would be using this are elderly right. going to doctor visits um yeah. you know, dialysis is a very very meal big dialysis component. is huge yes. you know so getting people to um the visits to get their dialysis um yeah that's kind of what's in my mind is how they would be used and the the challenge when it's on call like this is when somebody picks up the phone and says hey i need a ride um and i imagine this will be part of your marketing that if you're calling the expectation should be 30 minutes 45 minutes an hour whatever it may be from well so it wouldn't be i mean if you're calling same day yeah it would be what's available um so if the bus is in eldersburg and you're calling from hampstead and you want the bus now we're just gonna we're, we're not gonna be You're able to provide SOL. that right at that moment we might be able to do it later in the day but right then we can't but if you reserve it in advance like we do normal demand response um any other time you know up to two weeks ahead um then we can schedule the bus around where it needs to be accordingly and then if the we cannot provide the ride if we're if we're denying the ride because the bus is not available because it's full that day we're going to also keep track of those denials so that we have that data for going forward the um the, the last question for me is um do you believe the pilot program three months is long enough or should it be a six month through the end of the uh i think three months is a good year. start um i okay. think you know we're going to come back towards the end of it to you guys and if we see a big uptick in the last three weeks of the pilot then we'll probably ask you to extend it for <clears> those <throat> other three months um just to see how it goes if not you know we'll we'll have some options probably. and and the reason it just because the latter months you know is winter time it's harder for people to get out of their 
driveways and especially elderly don't want to drive in inclement weather and they would use more I would think mass transportation especially to dialysis and other um, scheduled care you know throughout the weekends our ridership so. does typically decrease in the winter just in yeah. general yeah um, I, I understand I mean I, I agree maybe during, it, like, it, it all depends seasons, also marketing maybe, so yeah but okay my but, only reservation with that is we're the ones that are allowing you to do the pilot program and if yeah. you do it for six months right. we don't have the ability to say we so, agree with you right. with your statistics because we ain't gonna be here it's true yeah. so I'd really <clears> like to yeah. keep it to the three months yeah. okay well, so that, and that's, and that's the that's whole fine. point of, of you know the, the one thing with pilots and that's the big discussion that we had at the beginning mm -hmm. purpose purpose-driven beginning in data collection and then coming back to you if at the end of that time you decide you want to do more based on the data or that's it that will be your decision so how many buses are you running a day you think on Saturday just one just one, just one. yes one the, the whole purpose of this is simply data collection one to bus. know okay. to and either put to rest or move forward so we have drivers do one. yes one driver one driver <laughs> and I have one dispatcher and that dispatcher will be able to cover the on call mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you wouldn't have to add another dispatch no. correct no additional we're not resources. adding staff at all right. okay any other yep. it was a good discussion it was a good question I, I agree three months is good I just want to hear right. whether it was three or six on your ideas Weinberg thanks for being here today are you having issues hiring drivers like everyone else seems to be having employment issues we are but it's getting better a lot better and um, we're more applicants we're getting a lot more applicants we started advertising on the back of our own buses and we've had a lot of people come in um, doing that so we've we're still looking for probably 10 to 15 part-time applicants but we um, we're running pretty pretty well right now do you get a lot of retirees looking for that's what I thought almost 95 percent of our applicants yes. so it's a good part-time employment for retirees yes. thank you Welcome. A lot more accidents, people driving with their knees, writing down the phone number that they see on the back of the bus. <laughs> and, uh, um, okay, good ideas. I appreciate it. Any other conversation, discussion? I'll make the motion that the commissioners uh, approve the Department of Public Works <coughs> Carroll Transit System to conduct the Saturday Services Pilot Program from August 1st, 2022 through October 28th, 2022 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, I'll second that. Any question, discussion? Commissioners, I'm sorry, one point. I just noticed a typographical error. That should be October 29th because that is the last Saturday that that would occur. I'm not amending that motion. <laughs> well, all right. All right, amend it to the 29th. Thank you, Commissioner. I will second that amendment. Very difficult. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Okay, four one. Okay. Thank you, Thank you commissioners. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Storm drain repairs. What's going on up in Westminster, Old Bachman Valley Road, and Manor Drive? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Office of Procurement in cooperation with the Bureau of Roads Operations requests your approval to use an existing term contract with ProShot Concrete Incorporated at the cost of $37,080. This amount is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. <laughs> you guys, I'll turn it over to Mr. Cook, you're looking quite sharp today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. This, um, this is a uh, um, a, a, the pro shot is the uh, concrete lining that you know because the pipe is deteriorated so we need to bring this um, deteriorated pipe into into compliance so we're we you know utilizing this contractor to to uh, to line the bottom of this pipe to, to bring it back into compliance so that's why we are coming for in front, in front of you today to you know get your approval on this project and this is much more cost effective than tearing whole pipe out yes 
Yes, it, it keeps the road open to traffic. You know, it doesn't have to close the road and it, it, it can do it all in one day. So there, it, it, Is this pro shot concrete waterproof? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Is it waterproof because it has an additive in it, or is it because 5,000 psi? It's the it's the 5,000 psi. Yeah. I would not want to be the guys that crawl inside that too. <laughs> that that is a rough looking job. It is. It's tough on. It's tough on the knees. It's tough on the body. It, <laughs> it takes a certain person to do that type of job. Plus, there's probably snakes down in nah, there too. You, <laughs> Kathy really didn't want you to bring that up. <laughs> I'll make the motion that we approve the repair of the storm drains on the old Bachman Valley's road and Manor Drive to Pro Shot Concrete, Inc. in the amount of $37,080. Second. Okay, you got a motion, you got a second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to Blacktop Purchase. We're here to ask your approval to award a contract with C.J. Miller in the amount of $85,000. C.J. Miller is one of our existing term contracts. This amount is within the fiscal year 22 budget and no additional funds will be necessary. This blacktop will be used to complete in-house projects. I'll turn it over to Mark to discuss those projects. Yes, these. Uh, this is a, uh, Robert Arthur Road was one that was chip sealed prior and due to Springheads in the area the water has penetrated and deteriorated the area so we thought it would be best to put asphalt on top of that area and, and seal it in that capacity and then we'll eventually chip seal it in a, in a future so that's a terrible spot right there too it is it's, I a, hit it the it's other. a wet area yeah you think maybe it needs more than just an overlay well because it's got the chip seal underneath it already that gives it a little oh, bit of okay. something there to hold on to because so. it seems like you guys have i know a guy that just came into the room that knows it very well i mean i've hit it i've hit it a couple times and i yes. i don't go that way now unless i want to throw a can or something into this yeah. individual's yard yeah but um <laughs> but uh it just seems like when you repair it a week later it's it does it's a mess. Yes, and it was previously a gravel road, so it was yeah. that kind of didn't help any. So, but we'll we'll do the necessary drainage that okay. we can. If we have to put under drain, we do, and then we can with this. Okay, put, that was the only point in bringing it up, Jim, yeah. to make sure it, in, in, that maybe you should throw something yeah, else. Yeah, and that's the, that's an ongoing battle with quite a few roads. You know, we do that. So, okay, but that's that's kind of what our intent is. Okay, the county's doing the work. Yes. Yes. You just want to buy the asphalt yes. blacked up. Okay. And with the price going up daily or changing, you don't know what you're gonna, how much you're gonna get. Yep. It's skyrocketing, actually. Yeah. Well, hurry up and get it. I make the motion that we approve your uh, your roads to purchase blacktop from C.J. Miller, in the amount of eighty-five thousand for that project. Second. I got a motion. I think I got a couple seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's talk about the construction of Sykesville, Maryland, 851. State Highway 851, the Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvement Project. Lots of work happening. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Morning. The Office of Procurement Cooperation with the Bureau of Utilities requests your approval to award a contract for the construction of the Sykesville, Maryland 851 Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project to Rivers Construction Group Limited of Jessup, Maryland in the amount of $1,745,865. This award was competitively bid and two, we received two bids from two contractors which are listed below with Rivers Construction Group coming in at the lowest bid of this amount is within the adopted budget. No additional funds will be necessary. Gentlemen, as you just heard, two bids were submitted for this project. The low bid was consistent with the estimated cost, and we are comfortable that the bid reflects a fair value. That, that being said, be aware that the construction world does remain very volatile. There were more than 80, uh, 30 separate downloads of the engineering drawings during the eight-week bidding process, and we only received the uh, two bids as shown on the briefing paper. This project is relatively straightforward, and my thoughts 
re regarding the small number of submitted bids lies with the supply issues and the unknowns of the water and sewer main pipe product. This is the third and final contract associated with the Sykesville Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project. This board previously approved contracts for engineering services to JMT in December of 2020 and construction inspection services to, to, to Whitman Reckhart in March of this year. Mm -hmm. The scope of work is, is as outlined in, in the briefing paper and includes major water and sewer improvements along Main Street from the intersection with Spout Hill Road and Springfield Avenue and continuing southward to the Sykes, Sykesville Pumping Station. This project will, will require my staff's ongoing coordination and outreach with the Town of Sykesville, as well as construction coordination with the State Highway and their planned Springfield Avenue Storm Drainage Improvement Replacement Project, as well as our county's uh, Springfield Avenue Water and Sewer Main Project, which is the topic of the next item coming up. Any questions for me? No, I'm glad you said that last line, because that was my question. Okay. Um, so I'm looking forward to that next conversation. Uh, twice as much i mean what a difference the the i guess the the good part of the answer is the low bid was very consistent with the engineer's cost estimate. yeah i think the yeah. the second bidder may have seen something that was not there or overestimated certain costs yep. if, if, the, if both of those prices were in the same realm then there would be some major issues yeah okay have we used rivers construction before we have not they're, they're we have, we checked out their work and yeah, everything's good because yeah, I'm also looking at the big difference in the price there. I'm thinking, I know you said it goes about what we thought, but that's a tremendous difference. Uh, are they doing everything that they're supposed to be doing and we're sure that's going to be done properly? Uh, once again, the, the, the low bid is consistent yeah. with insurance cost estimates, so I'm confident. I, I think okay. the issue is with the, with the second. The second as long as you're confident. Mm -hmm. yep. How does this tie into their Main Street renovation? Uh, the the, uh, the uh, streetscape project, yeah, uh, that that's pretty much been canceled by the state highway. They are moving forward with um, storm drainage improvements on Springfield Avenue, which may may, may be what you're thinking of, Commissioner. Okay. Um, we, we are coordinating the, this project very closely with with the state highway. Okay, and they are going to have conversations about streetscape further yeah. on, but this is this is absolutely the priority is get this road done. Um, I suppose it falling apart into the ground. So, um, I'm with the Board of Commissioners award a contract for the construction of Sykesville, Maryland 851 Main Street Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project to Rivers Construction Group. The amount of one million seven hundred forty-seven forty one million seven hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred sixty-five dollars. Second. That motion got a second. Any discussion on this? Seen here, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 A lot of money. Okay, let's talk about construction of Sykesville, Maryland 851, Springfield Ave, Water and Sewer Main Improvement Project. Commissioners, again, we're here to request your approval to award a contract for the construction of the Sykesville, Maryland 851, Springfield Avenue Water and Sewer Main Improvement Project to Rivers Construction Group Limited of Jessup, Maryland, in the amount of $2,293,575. This award will be made via an open com and competitive bid process. We received two bids, which are summarized below. These the two contractors that were listed, uh, Rivers did come in at the as low bid and most responsible and responsive bidder, and this amount is within the adopted budget, and no additional funds will be necessary. Gentlemen, the, the information regarding this agenda item will be very similar to the previous item regarding Main Street. Well, once again, two bids were submitted for the project by the same two contractors. In, in this instance, both bids were below the estimated cost of the project, and we are confident once again that the low bid does reflect a fair value. Once again, there were more than 30 separate downloads of the engineering drawings during the eight-week bidding process, and we, we only received the two bids as shown. Uh, once again, the only rational explanation for this regards the volatile construction world and, the, and with the supply issues and the unknowns of the water and sewer main pipe product. This is the third and final contract associated with the Sykesville Springfield Avenue Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project. This board previously approved contract awards for engineering services to RK and K in February of 2021 and construction inspection services to, to Whitman Reckhart in March of this year. If there are any questions regarding the structuring of this work and the previous Main Street item is two separate but coinciding projects, 
as a reminder, it was the Bureau's intent to complete the Main Street project first and then move on to Springfield Avenue. Mm -hmm. This approach had to be reassessed and changed when the State Highway found funding for their storm drain improvement project. So, so, so we did separate them out as two separate projects. At, at, at that point in time, the Main Street engineering work was two to three months ahead of Springfield Avenue with JMT. And we also realized cost savings by using the same consulting firm that the state used, RKK, for their storm drainage improvement work. So, so, so we, 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 the coordination effort was, was maximized by having the same consulting firm both, do both the water and sewer main project as well as the storm drain. There were numerous conflicts that, that would have had to been worked out between two separate consulting firms. The scope of work is as outlined on the briefing paper and includes major water and sewer improvements along Springfield Avenue from the intersection with Spout Hill and Main Street and mm -hmm. continuing eastward to Warfield Road. And, and again, this project will require my staff's ongoing coordination and outreach with the town of Sykesville, as well as construction coordination with the State Highway and their planned Springfield Avenue storm range uh, 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 improvement project. One of the major benefits of the county's two projects is that the low bidder on both of these projects is the same contractor. Mm -hmm. So our coordination will, will be <clears throat> straightforward. Any questions for me? I'll move the Board of Commissioners award a contract for the construction of the Sykesville, Maryland 851 Springfield Avenue Water and Sewer Main Improvements Project to Rivers Construction Group in the amount of two million two hundred ninety three thousand five hundred seventy five dollars second i got a motion in a couple of seconds any discussion all in favor aye. aye okay let's talk about the main street water and sewer main improvement project 10 percent spending authority approval gentlemen two items ago during the award of the main street construction project con conversation you heard me speak about the volatile construction world that presently exists and concerns with regards to pipe materials and abrupt pr price increases and you heard the, the very similar things mentioned in item one today with respect to fiber optic that that same problem does exist in, in the in the water and sewer main pipe world too in, in view of this and as per the briefing paper the bureau is requesting a 10 percent spending authority approval above the awarded contract value of the sykesville main street water and sewer main improvements project to allow construction activity to seamlessly continue in the event of escalating material costs or unforeseen circumstances beyond the control of the contractor with the approval and approve with the review and approval by bureau staff uh, the, the 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 resolution 9512015 currently limits the director of public works to a collective change order value of the lesser of either of one hundred thousand dollars or ten percent of the total contract award with respect to the current construction climate and the volatile price increases, the Bureau is requesting a 10% contingency value of $174,586.50 be approved by the Board. This is consistent with construction practices for larger scale projects like this Main Street project. The combined value of the awarded contract and this requested 10% value is within the adopted budget and no additional funds will be necessary. The, the Bureau has discussed this approach with the Office of Management and, and Budget and has their approval as well, or has their support. And to uh, summarize, your approval of this request would be a pre-authorization to spend up to the 10% requested dollar value without reappearing uh, before the Board in open session. Any change to, to the original construction contract would still be processed through budget and procurement as a formal change order. I would be re required to appear before the Board for for board approval for any expenditure in excess of this in the event that the 10 percent threshold value is reached have we have we done this before we're setting a precedent and it's pretty significant precedent with a 10 percent i mean just in the cost itself you know we have a responsibility not that i don't have complete and total faith in you and our team but we just have to if we're going forward with this, understand the precedent that we're setting, you know, well, I, and allowing this. And, and, and that's okay, I'm just, but it, it's significant. I think the precedent is not the 10%, the precedent is the amount because it was 10% or $100,000 or whatever was less. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is still 10%, but you, you realize it's going to be over $100,000. That's the only difference. So we've allowed 10% prior if yes. it was $100,000 less? 
Sorry, I don't understand your question. We, we've allowed um, <laughs> directorates to, it, you know. Directors do not need to come before you if it's under 100000 If it's under 100000 Or 10%, or 10 percent if, if the project's not a mil over a million dollars. Right, right. So, so the precedent really is going above the 100000 Right. Mark. Yeah, and getting pre-approval for it. The concern is the timing, and it's happened before where they've actually had to staff have actually had to authorize change orders because yeah. it would cost you, you know, the county right. way more, and then they run into open session as soon as possible um, after that to right. get the you know post approval. So they're just trying to avoid that. Well, I understand. And again, I'm I'm not I'm going to yep. recommend approval. I just want to make sure we all understand. At least I believe. Right. that this is a change to a procedure that we have in place. And this makes right. it very easy to contractor just to bump some up, maybe not that 10%, but a couple extra percent on this without coming back. It, it, it's a very easy process once this is approved. That's, that's, that's part of what our staff does is make sure that that's on point with our expectations and it, actually what they're requesting is legitimate. Uh, for for uh, this contract, Commissioner Weaver, we we, we, we have approximately 25 to 30 items. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a blanket dollar amount. We are going to be very cautious and careful with what we approve. My staff and I will absolutely uh, review it with a fine tooth comb. It's not going to be uh, 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 free available money for the contractor, for lack of a better way of saying that. I'm confident of that for this, but again, that's the, the, the pressing that we're going forward with that if we allow it here, like you said, others may not necessarily just take, well, they could take advantage of understanding that. Um, I, if I could say, um, to, uh, if that's, if that's going to, if that will be the board's uh, vote on this, and I'm not saying that it will be or not, please uh, bear with me when I take on the responsibility of instructing the contractor to move forward on certain items rather than risk losing him from the from the work site. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be, this is a very delicate project on a very old roadway mm -hmm. in Sykesville. We're confident that the plans have been done very well, very nicely, mm -hmm. but when we start opening the road up, there are unknowns that we are going oh, to likely absolutely. get. And I can't afford to stop work with the right. town of Sykesville's anxiety over this project and everything else that we're working towards. Right. <clears throat> I think we have a fairly unique situation here with regard to this, and although we've never um, gotten this sort of pre-approval for the uh, overage, I think the uniqueness of the situation um, warrants it in this case, that would be my personal opinion. Also, um, this delegation of authority um, resolution that, that Andy refers to is seven years old now, and it's uh, a little long in the teeth, and this is one aspect of, there's there are we're, staff will be bringing a, a updated delegation of authority to you for probably the end of July, and this is one aspect that we we hope to change but, um, because you know, it's are very. Putting, are we putting a cap on the dollar amount? Yeah, you know, there's still be a cap. Yeah, it's just this 10 percent and whichever is lesser is is very complicated for um, procurement and staff to work with. So we're we're suggesting a different approach going forward. So I don't I don't anticipate you'll ever have this kind of request again. So I'm not worried about the presidential value, nature. I can ensure you, you'll never have a request again. It's been a while since I've heard long in the teeth. <laughs> Good call. Okay, I'll move to board approved 10% for 174,586 dollars spending authority above the value of the awarded Main Street Water and Sewer Improvements construction contract. Second. I got a motion. I have a second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and you're against. I apologize. Against. 4 1. And you're asking for the same request for 10% on the second project, correct? That, that is correct. Okay. The same rationale. In this instance, the 10% value would, would amount to $229,357.50. Oh, you just said this wouldn't come before us again. <laughs> <laughs> I lied, clearly. <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay. You Understanding the same rationale. Move the board approved 10% or $229,357.50. 2 
Spending authority above the value of the awarded Springfield Avenue Water and Sewer Improvements Construction Project Construction Contract. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Uh, against? Okay, 4 1. Okay, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Thank you. I, am, I appreciate that. That's, it is a precedent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, what's your name, Chris? Any callers? Uh, I think we'll Rip Taylor on the line to wish Mr. Uh, Mr. Burke a happy birthday. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Is there somebody on the line? Just kidding. No. Nobody's on the line. Okay. I think oh. he just dated himself with that Is comment. There, uh, Rip Taylor. <laughs> Wow. Yep. <laughs> Actually, I just, I just heard Rip. I thought he said Rick at yeah. first. I was like, who's Rick Taylor? Good old Rip, Rip Taylor. Taylor. Big mustache. Uh, yep. Rip Taylor, come on. And, uh, he always threw stuff around. Yeah. Rip Taylor's awesome. Okay, anything for open admin? Was he an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> he he played one of Johnny Carson's show. <laughs> the last thing on TV. I used to love Rip Taylor. Um, anything for open admin? Okay, Wanda, why don't you come on up before this completely gets out of hand. Monday, July 4th, once again, the county offices, <clears throat> excuse me, are closed in observance of Independence Day. I know there are a lot of events happening between uh, this Saturday and July 4th, so hopefully weather will be good and people will get out and be with family and friends. Tuesday, we have nothing scheduled. Wednesday, July 6th, there's a planning commission, virtual? Yeah, canceled. There is nothing scheduled for Wednesday, <laughs> July 6th. On, seven, on Thursday, July 7th, we have open session. Go through a little bit of Priority Carroll. Then we have merger of services provided by Carroll County, oh, at the... Uh, Recovery Support Services Facility. They do a great job at RSS. Uh, proposed use of nine Carroll funding uh, regarding the commitment for opioid issues in fiscal year 2023. FY21 concurrency management report. Um, we're gonna hear some proposed amendments to chapter 153 that deal with flood, floodplain management along with chapter 38 that deal with the floodplain construction. We will listen to and discuss potential amendments to chapter 154, the water resource management, and then proposed amendments to chapter 150 that deal with agricultural, agriculture, excuse me, forestry and natural resource conservation. And then we are looking at the creation of chapter 159, which deals with agricultural land preservation. And chapter 160, the right to farm. Maybe we just have Chris Hines sit up here with us during that <laughs> whole time. Uh, Friday, nothing scheduled. Saturday, nothing scheduled. Commissioner Boucher has the podcast on the 10th. <clears throat> the following week, Transit Advisory Council meeting down in room 105 commissioner frazier uh 3 p.m on monday tuesday july 12th i will be attending the ag center board meeting at 7 p.m wednesday nothing scheduled thursday we go into open s session um first uh the sheriff <clears throat> and his team will talk about the opioid exam and treatment grant and ward acceptance. We'll then have FY23 Sheriff's Overtime Grant and awards award acceptance. Uh, IT will come in to talk about Cisco Hyperflex subscription renewal. And then we'll have a 2021 planning annual report from Ms. Eisenberg and her planning team. Uh, Mid-cycle review from Ms. Eisenberg. And that'll be it so far for that morning. On Friday, Commissioner Wentz will be attending the Baltimore Metropolitan Council Board of Directors meeting at 9 a.m. And at 4 p.m., Commissioner Boucher and Frazier will be attending the Family Summer Bash 
so at the summer at the sports complex excuse me and i believe commissioner frazier will be in the dunk tank i will be hopefully and not I'm, in the dunk tank but i'm sitting above uh, it. i have to think about this i might join you i did this once before as long as the weather's not cold well it's, i'm hoping the same but and i've done it before but you know very big of you by the way do i have a fence in front of me i feel protected <laughs> okay saturday we have nothing saturday i have the podcast did i miss anything at this time <laughs> once again uh <clears throat> you know it was mentioned earlier civic duty early voting is 7th through 14th and then the primary election day is the 19th of july i need a motion we don't have any clothes or anything right cool motion to adjourn second Got a motion to adjourn. I got a second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.